Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Dame and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I've got five tips and tricks to help you on that easter egg quest for the frozen dawn and make it just that tiny bit easier. So if you enjoyed today's video or if it helps you in any way, be sure to leave a thumbs up on the video. It is appreciated. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Boy, subscribe! For loads of Call of Duty content and we're going to be streaming a lot of Blackout as well so you're not going to want to miss that. But homies, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So the first tip on today's list, or first two tips are actually regarding the shield and the shield upgrade for the Frozen Dawn. The first one I'm going to show you really helps me out quite a lot and I did struggle a few times on this particular step. On one of the steps you're going to have to kill a corpse eater on top of a blood pool so it reveals something called a somatic cipher, basically bubbly blood. But lining up the actual corpse eater itself can be very difficult because if you stood at the back and you're shooting him with a gun, he usually runs straight into you and straight to the back and by the time you've got enough damage on him, he falls on the corners or falls on the edges and you end up missing your opportunity with that particular corpse eater, which can be very frustrating if you have to keep spawning them in or using the teleporter. What a very, very cool tip that I have learned is if you go and grab the scythe, it does not have to be upgraded whatsoever. Before around, let's say 10 or 15, which is when you should be doing the shield upgrade, the scythe will destroy one of the corpse eaters with one swipe. So if you stand in exactly the position of the blood pool, so just before it but at the back, so when the corpse eater runs at you, as soon as he makes contact with you or he's about to make contact with you from head on, you just swipe your scythe one time and he will stand still and drop straight to his knees in that exact position as opposed to running behind you and doing loads of circles around you which makes it absolutely difficult to get him in the right position. So simply just hit him once with the scythe, he'll drop to the floor, run away because he's going to explode and he will down you and that is it. You'll be able to get the bubbly patterns from the blood first time every time. Sticking on the topic of upgrading the shield, the corpse eaters themselves. They can be very very frustrating and the usual way to spawn them in is by going into a teleporter, into Pack-a-Punch or just using a teleporter and two of them will spawn in at once. Each corpse eater will have to eat five zombies to be able to be fully charged and used to actually reveal the bubbles in the blood pools themselves. So what makes this difficult is that you're going to have to usually save 10 zombies because two will spawn and two will need to eat five each but if you only save five and you don't manage to kill one of the corpse eaters and that ends up eating one of your five there's not enough zombies for all the corpse eaters and you end up having to go around and if you've not got stamina up it makes it really really difficult what well, a huge tip for this is if you take yourself to the overlook and where you would go to obtain the raven pistol you have to press square on a golden raven by doing this it will spawn a bunch of ravens around the map of which i have all locations in a video on screen so if you'd like to know all the locations or most of them click that video and you'll be able to find most of the locations or if you shoot one of these ravens it will automatically spawn in a corpse eater fully charged which means he will only chase you so what i like to do is save one zombie on the map find the nearest raven shoot the raven and run straight to my blood pool as fast as i can and wait for him the second he comes in coupled with the first tip i gave you about the scythe you can swipe him he'll drop to the ground and you'll get it first time every time without having to worry about extra zombies extra corpse eaters and it really does take some huge huge difficulty away from upgrading the shield itself the next two tips i have for you are actually regarding the hammer and they're not so much tips but the kind of shortcuts to make everything easier for you on one of the steps for upgrading the hammer itself you're going to have to play a puzzle which can be found by the flag tree itself and if you're playing on your own or within a group this puzzle can be very difficult sometimes for people especially who are not very good at puzzles like myself well on screen now i have a puzzle solver for you and all you have to do is shoot the blocks in order like you can see on screen right now there are two variations for the first puzzle when you complete the first one it goes on to the second there's only one variation and then there's a third puzzle as well you literally line up my puzzle solver that's on screen now with the blocks you have shoot the numbers one two three four in order and every time guaranteed you will get the right combination and you can be in and out of that puzzle room 
in less than two minutes. And even if you're doing it on your own and you're trying to save a zombie, you can always just run by, shoot one or two free blocks, run back out and run back in, shoot another two or three blocks without even thinking because you know the exact location. The next tip I've got is also for the hammer, but this one's not for upgrading it. This is just for actually getting it. If you notice, when you put in the right combination to make the hammer spawn, you can have to creep up to the hammer, grab the hammer. It will then fly around the map. And each time it flies around the map, it flies back to where the battery is, where you first tried spawning in the hammer and it gets electrocuted. But there are two pillars that you have to turn around with the right combinations to give the hammer enough power to be able to actually pick it up. These combinations can be very, very difficult. Well on screen now, there is a pillar puzzle solver and there is a link in the description as well. And you literally line up the pillars with this solver online. Looking at the solver, it can be confusing, but if the arrow is facing down, that means the lightning strike, the black side of the cube is facing you. And if the arrow is pointing up, that means the black side of the cube with the little lightning on it is facing towards the back. And of course, right is right, left is left. So you literally look at your pillar, you look at the combination that it is, you input it into this puzzle solver, you click solve, and it will tell you exactly how many times you need to shoot either block A, block B, block C, or block D. You can use this on both pillars and it makes it so much easier. And again, it works first time, every single time. And the last and a final tip for the Frozen Dawn, you know it was gonna be in here and you know exactly what I'm going to say. You having trouble on that boss fight? Is he too much of a beast for you? Well, don't worry, I've got just the thing for you, a flamethrower. Yes, it's a very well known at the minute. It could be patched in the future, but it does seem by the congratulations of Sledgehammer Games to the world's first that the flamethrower is indeed a legitimate way to kill the main boss in the Frozen Dawn. So what you want to do, you want to equip the flamethrower in your consumables. When you spawn into the boss fight, you simply need to run up to the boss with your flamethrower and just let him have it. If you want, you could go in with Shell Shock and activate Shell Shock just before you start hitting him with the flamethrower. But within about five to 10 seconds, the main boss will fly to the center of the actual area itself. You then simply shoot the three pads on the floor, one in the middle and two on the back corners. And then that is it. The boss will get up. He will suck you back into the center. He will kill all the players or just you on the map. And you will go straight into the cutscene. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You've just completed the Frozen Dawn boss fight in less than 30 seconds. Yes, I know it's very, very well known by now, but this video is aimed at the casual player who may be struggling and may need that extra little bit of help with the boss fight. Be warned, it could be patched in the future. There is a very likely possibility that it could be patched, okay? So just be warned. If that's the case, then this tip won't work anymore. But that's all the tips I've got for you today. If you've got any tips that you would like to share, be sure to put them in the comment box down below and I'll be sure to look them over. And if we have enough tips for another video, I can make another and give you a juicy shout out as well in that video. And hopefully together we can help a lot more players. But homies, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I do hope it helped you. I hope at least one of these tips helped you. And if it did, be sure to comment in the box below and let me know if it did. Enjoy the rest of your day. Until the next one, this is your boy Dame, and I'm out.